Hello dear student. I am sure you must be intrigued by the various uh, mechanistic principles that we have to understand at this level. My experience says that if you go step by step and you do a little bit of practice at your own level, this becomes pretty easy. And the best thing is to discuss it or to further teach it to some other student. That not just uh, helps the other person but also helps to clear the thought process for you as well when you write, when you speak because that's the way even I learned. So let's start with SN2 reactions today. Substitution, nucleophilic, bimolecular. A reaction in which in the rate determining step two molecules are involved. Now let us see why they are called bimolecular nucleophilic substitution reactions. When we say nucleophilic substitution, that means replacement of an atom or a group by a nucleophile. Hence, nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, we need a substrate here. We need a nucleophile here. So, this first step is the generation of the nucleophile. Now, when I'm talking about the reaction of an alkyl halide with aqueous NaOH, the hydroxide ion over here will act as the nucleophile. Nucleophile means nucleus loving. Nucleus loving means itself it will have a negative charge or a, an electron rich center. Coming to step 2, the alkyl halide that is my substrate over here gets attacked by the nucleophile. Why will the nucleophile attack the alkyl halide? That's because the halide ion has high electronegativity. It pulls the electron cloud towards itself leaving the carbon with a slight positive charge although it will be a slow process. So, we have an intermediate stage where the nucleophile and the leaving group, that is my bromide over here, are at the same time connected to the carbon atom of the alkyl group. Although this intermediate stage involving a pentavalent carbon would be highly unstable. We have carbon showing a tetravalency. Here, carbon is slightly bonded to the OH as well as the halide ion. The energy being released when the nucleophile gets attached to the carbon is used up for breaking the bond between the carbon and the halide ion. This is a slow step. Always the slowest step is rate determining. Hence, the rate of this particular reaction will depend on the concentration of the substrate and the nucleophile, giving us a second order reaction. There are two molecules involved, bimolecular, two molecules. As we said, the intermediate is highly unstable. So, we have the next step where the intermediate tends to release the halide ion forming the final product which is an alcohol over here. This would be a fast reaction. Here we have depicted the alkyl carbon in a more expanded form to convey another interesting point in this bimolecular nucleophilic substitution reactions and that is the inversion of configuration. We have a tetrahedral carbon over here gets attacked by a nucleophile we have an intermediate pentavalent carbon turning to the final product in alcohol. If you notice over here, the configuration has changed because the, hell, the nucleophile has come and attacked it from the side opposite to where the halide ion lay. Hence, this time the configuration of the final product is opposite to that of the initial reactant. This change in configuration is what is termed as Walden inversion. Some authors like to say that it is comparable to the turning inside out of an umbrella in strong wind. In order to understand this and remember it more clearly, 
I would advise you to first go through it and then write it also on your own so that you are comfortable with it. I hope you enjoy these videos and I look forward to your feedbacks on the same. Have a good day.